This is a digital marketing quick start guide for a local restaurateur. Stop underestimating the internet. Let me just let Gary V explain it. Here's what's up. This internet thing, it's real. <laughs> and, and, and the reason I go there, I need you guys all to listen very carefully. Everybody, including me, is underestimating how big this internet thing is. We got so lucky and we're also a little bit screwed. A lot of you in 30, 40, 50 years are gonna look back at this era and be like, fuck, how good we had it, I didn't get it. And I'll tell you what I mean by that. The reason I was able to build my dad's business from a three to a $60 million business like that was because of the internet. I would have done it. I would have had 15 liquor stores, I would have done it. But it wouldn't have been done that way and definitely not at that speed. This thing is so, guys, this is a more powerful computer in your pocket right now than President Reagan had running the fucking free world. Everything's about distribution and what you put in it. Do you know how crazy it would be to wake up tomorrow and not have the internet? You'd like, you just sit. <laughs> like, you wouldn't know what to do. This is now where we live. This is now secondary to this. You may not like it, you may think it's weird, but it's the truth and it will play out. And guess what? A lot of things have happened to the human race. Like we struggle in putting things into context because you take for granted what you have. This video is my answer to the question of where I'd start based on my 13 years experience, were I you? a local restaurateur ready to get your digital marketing going even though you have a challenging marketing budget right now. Let's define strategy so that we can sync up before we move forward. So, we're gonna to put together a strategy. What does that mean? A plan of action or policy designed to achieve a major or overall aim. So the overall aim of this digital marketing strategy for a local restaurateur find profitable new customers and foster frequency across their menus. Who are you? Owner of a local restaurant or possibly multiple locations. Non-digital native, born before the digital revolution, challenging marketing budget. I'm Jason Hobbs, marketing degree with honors, Valdosta State University, lovely Valdosta, Georgia, which is about an hour south of where I'm at now. In 2008, I incorporated Jason Hobbs LLC, DBA Jason Hobbs Digital, at 416 West Cypress Street, Fitzgerald, Georgia, 31750, where my grandparents, Ken and Hazel Hobbs, grandma and gramps to me, raised their family and ran their local business for well over 50 years. Okay, so this strategy's budget is $3,740 for year one. It could go up, it could, it's gonna be based on how successful it is. It, but if it's successful and some of the cost of it goes up in order to deliver it, I mean, price of doing business, right? All right, quick start guide, digital marketing, where do we start? Your foundation, your home, your direct reflection of your restaurants Dining area, online. Okay, how does that work? Well, we go with the restaurant engine. With it, typically, they try and within five days to have your website up. As long as you give them all the info that you have and $500, set up, customization, launch, and the first month of service for the 500 bucks. And then it's gonna be monthly. They, all the core features, hosting, support, but not online ordering, you're gonna to wanna to add that on though. That's another 40, or you could go premium, which you're probably gonna to wanna to do because that'll tie into your point of sale system as long as it's one of the 40 or more that you'll find at restaurantengine.com forward slash pricing. 40 bucks per month for customer feedback loop using get5stars.com. What you need is a way to know how your customers feel about the service they've received at your restaurant, right? And you put up a helpline and so forth, do that, that's great. Leave whatever you already have, but add in a digital component to where 
every person that comes in that you have an email address for, you're able to send them a follow-up after they visited to see how did they like the experience, have them rated on a scale of one to 10. This is basically setting out what's called a net promoter score or NPS score. And it comes down to two things. Either A, if they give you one to eight, they're going to go into what I call a customer service queue where you're gonna be able to exceed their expectations, make them happy, get them back, part of the frequency program, right? Now, as far as the nine and 10, those people, you're going to say thanks and you're going to ask them to share that publicly and you're gonna make it as easy for them as possible, right? So here's all the different places, pick which one you wanna share it on and we greatly appreciate it. You can also share it back on your website directly as well. So there's a lot of positives to that for your business, right? So we move then into Drip ECRM. It's 50 bucks a month once you have over a hundred subscribers. And you use this to manage your customer relationship. And this is the email component, but it's also directly connected, directly plugged into the website component. Because make no mistake, th this is just an extension of that online dining area, if you will, for your restaurant. Okay, so Drip starts out free. I'm still on the free. So <clears throat> until I get 100 subscribers in there, you know, I'm I'm still free. Then it'll be 50 bucks a month, and then 2,500, it'll go up to 100, and well worth it. I mean, if I got 2,500 subscribers, I'm excited, right? <clears throat> All right, the whole point of this for you as a digital restaurant owner, if you will, <laughs> but you know, local restaurateur, we want to digitally organize your relationship with your customer. The way that we're going to do that is we want to kind of hook them, if you will. And the approach, the strategic bent, if you, whatever, that we're going to employ is by John Taffer, episode 257 of the Ask Gary V Show. And let's play that. Add one more uh, thing, if I can, for you. If you can increase your guest frequency by one visit a month, that's a 12 to 15% increase in revenue. Right. One visit more per month is 12 to 15%. You need to work on that as well. So you need to have the frequency programs in place. You need to have programs to get people that come midweek back on weekends. People that have a propensity to come on weekends, to come back midweek. You need to work this uh, uh, in a more immediacy type of a way. You've got to increase frequency as well, especially in a market like yours where you can only get too many, so many new customers. You got a lot of barbecue in your area. So, sure, yeah, so, no, absolutely. So sometimes it isn't a question of adding more customers. Sometimes it's a question of adding more customers and more frequency. And that's the right. combo that together will make you much more successful. There's, now look, Can I make that please, work for him? I ahead. do exactly the same thing go in ahead. a different way. Go ahead. If you buy a guest through traditional media, yep. the cost of that guest is typically 40 to $80. Bingo. If you, so let's say your rib dinner costs you $5, food costs, the ribs, yep. the potato, the platter, the whole thing. I would give out 100 coupons for a free rib dinner to people that have never been there before. No restrictions. So now, Gary walks up to the front door with a coupon. I got a coupon for a free rib dinner. Never been here before. Come on in. First of all, I don't pay till they come. Yep. Second, I'm paying $4.65, not $40 to $60 per each customer. Right. And then here's something that nobody else will tell you. If somebody goes to a restaurant for the first time and has a flawless experience, the statistical likelihood of them doing a second visit is about 40%. They come you back know, a second too, time because, and have yeah, a flawless yeah. experience. The statistical likelihood of a third visit is still about 42%. The third time they come, the statistical likelihood of a fourth visit is over 70%. So wow. you got to market to three visits, not one. Visit one free wow. rib dinner. You sit them down, put yeah. a red napkin on the table, not a white one. Identify them as a first time customer, connect with them and work to get them back a second time and a third time. Once they're there the third time, you own them. Sure, so, let me can I it. detail that Go for ahead. him? Go ahead. Okay, so you put a red napkin at the table. Gary sits down, he's eating dinner. Now he's getting his free rib dinner, orders water, costs him nothing. I know he's right. a first time customer because he's got a red napkin. When he's leaving, right. the manager comes to the table, writes on the back of a business card, $5 off chicken. Did you like the ribs? 
Love them. You got to try my chicken. Come in for the chicken. Now I'm prompting a second visit, not with a printed Holy coupon, crap. a handwritten yeah. card. Now he comes in yeah. for the second visit, drops the business card on the table. Everybody knows this is a second visit because Red Napkin was the first yep. visit. Second visit, oh you finish gosh, the yeah. meal, you go up, you say, so how was the chicken? It was freaking great. Are you full? Totally stuffed. Man, next time you got to try my cheesecake. Peace, free piece of cheesecake. Now, three visits. So the rib dinner <laughs> cost me $5. The chicken was yeah. a washout. This right. was a discount. That's right. The cheesecake is $1.35. Right. For about $6, you got three visits out of them with a 70% likelihood of a fourth. Let That's the way you right. market a restaurant within that, the four walls that, of it. Okay, so as John pointed out, you want new and frequency for success. So the way that I kind of organize that is, okay, well, we got to be able to get attention, but we need to be able to keep it first. So we're going to set up John's plan. And the way that we do that is using Drip and the website from Restaurant Engine. And what's going to happen is the offer... This is the one that I put together. Obviously, you can use whatever you want. But if you're cool enough to join our inner circle, you deserve your first plate on us. And then at the table when they redeem, so they sign up to get access. They say, yes, I want that. So you send them an invite. And all it is is an email saying, hey, you know, now in our inner circle, here's that free meal that we said. So now they come in and the way that they they redeem it is a tablet at the table or whatever, but they give you their email address. I like the tablet at the table because then they just type it in real quick, hit enter, you know, a button at the bottom and voila. And it, that'll be tied into drip because as long as you have an internet connection, right? So they type it in. It's a drip form on that tablet. Join our inner circle free rib dinner is how I would name it right? And it'll tag them. It'll put them onto the proper list. It'll put them into a sequence where they're going to be emailed after a certain amount of time, right? So seven days later, Drip sends invitation to bring a friend for fee via a buy one, get one. Buy one, get one plate, let's say. So now at the table again, when they redeem it, they type in their email address. It's the Drip form inner circle because they're already in the inner circle. Bring a friend, the BOGO plates. Seven days later, Drip sends invitation for dessert on us. Tablet at table, type in their email address for access to redeem the dessert, and it's a Drip form, inner circle dessert on us. Now, you're going to want to track campaigns for new people as well, right? So we're setting it up to where we're able to track their progress as they move through each of those steps. The point being, as Taffer put it, you know, once they come the third time, there's a 70 some odd percent chance that they're going to return for a fourth time. So that's what you're, you're marketing, not for the one visit, you're marketing for the three visits so that you can have a higher frequency of those new people. So new people come in and at a higher frequency, that's better for the business. So when you're figuring cost of acquisition, keep in mind there's two parts to this. There's about eight bucks in food costs for using those three right? And then as far as the three inducements that we talked about. So he said rib dinner about five bucks. Buy one, get one. I'm not sure exactly how that would play out. So that's why I put it's typically less than a total of eight bucks plus any advertising costs spent to successfully invite them to your inner circle. So the new eyeballs are going to come from your choice of two options. You pay for access to someone else's audience. You grow your own direct audience. Of course, Anyone that doesn't unsubscribe will come out of your frequency program we detailed earlier as part of that direct audience that you're looking to build as a business asset for your, your long term. And in this instance, I was referring to it as the inner circle. So you should do both. You're going to want to grow your own audience, but you're going to want to get new people to come into that audience, you know, as far as. You're going to want to pay for ads to find those people that you're not getting in touch with yet. You're also going to want to do some retargeting based off of having the Facebook pixel or the, you know, with Google Analytics so that you can um, you know, retarget people either in the Facebook or the Google ad product that have visited a specific page on your site. So if they've been to your you know, lunch menu or your dinner menu or whatever, you're able to, or catering menu, you're able to 
you know, show them contextual ads and just kind of test the creative uh, in those campaigns for a while to really start to tune things in over time. So I really like Peter McKinnon's video. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll that. I think it's fair to say that consistency is key. If you're constantly updating and uploading videos to your channel, to your social networks, wow. photos to your Instagram, whatever, technically staying relevant, that's good. You, you want to put out a constant stream of content so that your fans and people that enjoy consuming that content get used to coming back every week and seeing the stuff that you're making. I think the underlying message of this whole thing is like, uh, stay true to yourself and create the stuff that makes you happy. Because ultimately that's going to yield better content and it's gonna keep you happier longer. So forget the naysayers, the haters in the comments, the people that wanna dictate how you do your life. Forget that, let them sink their own ships. You've got your own plans, stick to those, keep creating, do what makes you happy, stay true to yourself, you'll make better content. Yeah, yeah, I'm happy with that. So the retargeting of the site visitors I was talking about, part of that is set up by a drip workflow. I just wanna show you, you're gonna have probably many of these workflows that you're gonna build over time and add to and update and you know improve and replace in some instances, et cetera, right? But this is a workflow and it's, a, it's one that uh, I plan to replicate. And what I mean by that is I'm not gonna copy it. I want to also create some of these workflows that we can give away to people that will help simplify the, the process as they get up and running with Drip, right? So just like these are helping me, I wanna be able to have the future people to see these and a bunch that I did and hopefully that I inspired others to do as well.